Sparks. I'm Peter. I'm Cody. Um, we spent a whole bunch of time building and working on this vacuum-powered ping pong ball cannon, which we ended up naming Murphy's Law. And uh, Cody, take it away. All right. So the basic principle of this cannon that we made is that air likes to go from high pressure to low pressure, all fluids do. And so what we do with our vacuum that we made, which we'll be explaining later, is we create a partial vacuum inside the uh, chamber of the gun. We have both ends sealed, one with mylar, one with tape. Uh, and what this allows us to do is create a vacuum inside. And there's about 11.114 psi of pressure at the altitude that we're at. And we create about 5.794 psi on the inside of vacuum. So it goes from 11.114 to 5.794. And what that does is it causes a high vacuum on the inside. And so what we do to fire it is we remove one area of the, bed of the chamber by uh, just poking a hole in it, which allows all of the air to rush in from the in outside to the inside, which allows uh, the ping pong ball to be projected forward, going at roughly the same speed as the air. Peter will talk more about that later. And so the basic principle is just causing a vacuum inside, breaching the vacuum, and allowing the ping pong ball to be shot out the other end. It's a pretty basic concept, but it took us a while to get right, which is why we call it Murphy's Law. It seems like something almost always goes wrong every time we try and fire it. And we went through lots of iterations making it have a working design. So it seemed right that we named the gun Murphy's Law. So we spent a bunch of time testing a bunch of different materials to plug both ends of the pipe with. And what we started was tin foil on both ends, and it really wouldn't stand up to the vacuum pressure, it'd rip every time. So what we did on this end, where it's ruptured allowing air in, we did mylar, which is what fancy party balloons are made of. Now what that does, it's pretty strong and it's pretty stretchy, so it stands up well to the uh, vacuum pressure and it seals against the pipe well. So it worked really great for this end, and I could cut it really easily with the X-Acto knife. Now on this end, we had a lot more trouble. We tried tin foil and it would just rip every time. We couldn't get good seals with it. We tried saran wrap, but it was too weak. It would tear under the vacuum pressure. We tried mylar on that end as well, but it was too strong for the ping pong ball to go through. It hit it and just stuck. We even tried packing tape, but that was too strong. It ripped weird. It didn't work. It leaked all the time. And I was joking after a whole bunch of failed materials testing. I said, why don't we try scotch tape, which turned out to work perfect because when layered over itself, Scotch tape kind of forms this rigid but still flexible enough weave. And what it does is it stands up really well to the vacuum pressure because it seals to itself with the adhesive. But it's rigid enough that the ping pong ball can penetrate it pretty easily when we fire the cannon. Alright, so now I'm going to be talking about the uh, vacuum we made for our uh, cannon. The, now the first thing that we needed was just uh, some sort of way to power our cannon. Something to pump out all the air. And originally we used this... Uh, pump that our school had gotten off of like a $900 grant that they had applied for. And it ended up being nowhere near powerful enough to create the suction we needed in order to get uh, remotely the speeds we wanted. So we ended up looking up online how to make your own vacuum pump. And we found this in a great YouTube tutorial. And uh, what we ended up doing is making it out of PVC. It works by having two one-way valves that allow air to only come in from one way and leave one way. So what happens when you uh, pull up on the piston, it creates a low pressure area inside of our uh, vacuum, which then the high pressure inside of our uh, cannon then has all the air rush in to fill the void, which allows it to, which this one way valve only allows to come from one way. Then when you press down on the piston, it creates a high pressure inside the uh, vacuum then higher pressure than it is, you know, outside in just the normal atmosphere, which causes the air to escape through the second one-way valve. Now, it's something that's kind of funny about this is that it works better at the uh, higher vacuum the pressures you get to because it causes the valves to work better. So it starts to maximize its ability to actually be a vacuum once you get it around uh, negative five inches of mercury. So in order to calculate the air velocity of the cannon itself, I had to first figure out what the atmospheric pressure in SS Park is, which comes out to about 11.142 psi. And then using this awesome engineering calculator I found online, I spent a ton of time figuring out which different things I need to know. First I had to calculate airflow rate through an orifice, so that came out to 871.184 standard cubic feet per minute, 
at 11.142 psi outside and 5.794 psi inside at 71 degrees Fahrenheit. So basically that's the pressure outside the cannon, the pressure inside the cannon, and the rate at which air will enter the cannon. Then once I knew that, I could calculate the air velocity through the piping. So schedule 40 piping, 2 inch diameter, 871.185 standard cubic feet per minute, 71 degrees Fahrenheit, at 11.142 psi, calculates out to 261.113 miles per hour. Now, that isn't the exact speed that the ping pong ball is traveling. This is just the rate at which air travels through the pipe. So because it's not a perfect seal, seal with the barrel, we know that the ping pong ball is going somewhere in the neighborhood of 220 to 230 miles an hour. Yeah, hold hold up and stay up. Nothing. Let's get... Two, one. That no broken like ping pong ball either. It's a white mark on the freaking wood though. Last time we talked to you, as you notice, our shirts have changed, but we found a new material that actually works better than the tape that we were using previously. It's a new, it's a different kind of mylar. It's much thinner and a bit less stretchy than what we were using that came from balloons. And so now we're able to use a pipe cap on both ends to just cap it off and fire it off. And I think that we've achieved a higher velocity closer to what I've actually calculated because it just, from our videos and the sounds it's made, it seems to be firing more powerfully. So it just goes to show that in science, you're never really quite done. You're always constantly trying to better things and improve yourself. Sort of like prove yourself wrong almost. Just see what happened wrong and try and make it better. It's the scientific process, really. That's, a, again, a huge part of the engineering process. You have to look at what didn't work, what failed, how could we improve this, and how to learn from your mistakes. And we, we, had, we did a lot of that. This project was started in December of 2013, and it is... Now, the Wednesday before the Science Festival on April 25th, where we are to present this project to the public, and we're still, 2014. still working on it, we just found this material, so just goes to show, project's never over, there's still things you can improve. Remember, Chase, there's always, failure is always an option, it also shows that there's still a mystery to things, because we still actually, there's this thing that's going on with the cannon, where it kicks backwards, and we're not sure why it does it, because all the forces imparted on the cannon should be like blowing a sail. And what it should do is it should actually jump the cannon forward. But what happens when we fire it off is you can see the gun kick back. And we're still not sure why this happens. It's a complete mystery to us. So if you can explain to us why we have enough of a net force moving towards me when I fire the gun, please let us know. So thank you for watching. We hope you've enjoyed. We hope you learned something. And remember, failure is always an option.